So I got another LED bulb. Um, this one's a Philips, and um, I was surprised that this had failed, but this is a third generation Philips LED A socket, and um, this came out of my bathroom um, of torture. So it was arranged in a um, orientation where all the heat was being trapped uh, around the bulb, uh, so it's an in inverted position. Um, so, you know, it's it's a very cheap uh, LED. It's got a plastic diffuser, which you know the older generations didn't have. Um, just overall, it just looks really cheap. So we're gonna take a look inside and see what we find. So I've got this apart now, and uh, what I ended up doing was taking a hacksaw and just cutting around the outer um, flange or, or over molding. Um, so that was actually pretty real easy to, to take part. So what I found inside was this guy. So this is again another metal insulated uh, substrate that's um, bonded to um, an aluminum carrier. And this carrier is in contact with um, an aluminum shell that's inside the base. So this is probably for um, heat conduction away from the uh, IMS material. Um, not a very good thermal connection to this outer case, unfortunately, because um, this material is very thin. So I, I don't know if that was their full intent or whether it was also to provide from a safety point of view, if, if this failed, that this thing would then short to the neutral, which would be this outer section. Um, and again, I'm not even sure if that's even in contact with the space. Take a quick look and see. So on the outer base, the socket inner yeah so it's not even in in uh, electrical contact so it's probably strictly for thermal reasons so what we have is um, an IC that is the uh, LED controller um, keep forgetting the, the name of it. So it's a BP2861. You've got the rectifier. So it's just a you know, single um, full bridge rectifier. You've got the inductor. You've got the caps. There's, um, I believe, uh, an EMI filter here. I think this is an inline fuse, so this would go to the hot, which is the very bottom guy there. And this is your neutral connection, which would be the outer part of the screw. So when I took this apart, this was actually not even connected, which was, you know, kind of interesting. And that started to make me think that maybe that's all that there was uh, wrong with it. Um, I did check the. Uh, um, LED controller and the high voltage MOSFET seems to be intact so interesting so the other thing about this is that they have 11, 11 LEDs uh, here and 11 LEDs here and these guys are parallel series stacks and you know from what I was able to beep out that's not a good thing to do um, LEDs they're forward voltage um, I think almost all of them, I don't know of any that don't do this, their forward voltage always decreases as temperature increases. So you get into this case where you're going to get into a thermal runaway happening that, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to do um, a split of current between two branches. And if they're very tightly, um, you know, uh, held at the same temperature, which this IMS material will help do, um, you can probably get away with it and there will be some imbalances. So now we get into this, this failure um, mode. So every one of these LEDs is blown 
And uh, that's a very curious failure. And what can happen is that if you do get a single failure on an LED, um, they tend to short first. And what happens after that is that because it's such a sudden um, failure that the uh, LED controller can't compensate quick enough. So all that voltage that was across the 11 is now across 10. And that causes basically a current pulse to go through the series. And you get the next one failing. And then it just kind of goes boom, 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 boom. You, you see a cascade failure. Now, that doesn't mean that that's what happened on this, but it's just really odd that one side is done, or sorry, both sides have all their LEDs uh, failed. And I could see that maybe happening that if you had one string fail down and then short open, or sorry, uh, blow open, that that spike would then occur across the next series. And then you can see a similar type of failure. But yeah, I, I'm having a tough one to figure out what actually happened on this. Um, you know, there was obviously some high temperatures in here, but um, nothing serious enough to cause, to, you know, discoloration of the base. So looking at their first generation uh, bulb, their second generation bulb, so this one actually has a crack due to the heat. You can see the discoloration. And this one still works, but I imagine that um, I'll be tearing this one down eventually. Glass uh, diffuser, plastic diffuser. So this is the beefiest one. Um, this one here actually uh, has a few of the LEDs failed in it, but it's still working, which is amazing. Um, and you know, you look at how they've done the heat sinking. You can tell this one would be uh, a much more beefier, um, longer lasting LED bulb. Of course. At the time, this was like a $25 bulb, and this was like about a $15 bulb, and now we're down to like dollars um, for a bulb. And as you can see, there's there's quite a <laughs> difference between the 25 and the 15 and and the two. So, anywho, uh, that's about all I can do about that, um, and. I will just have to wait for the next one to fail and take a look at it to see if it's a, the same thing. Um, and maybe that's just uh, the failure mode. You know, when, when it goes, it really goes.